Now, he is the luckiest little kid I've ever met in my whole life. First time I ever took him striper fishing, he caught a 53-pound striper <laughs> from the bank. Wow. Yeah, we were just chilling uh, on Melton Hill Lake and threw out some cut baits, and our rod just goes... <laughs> the award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host... Drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and listening. we got a great show for you today uh, back in studio, and we're going to be talking a lot about fishing today. Imagine that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's getting that time of year. I, it is. Spring it really is, is on the way, and I'm looking forward to fishing, turkey hunting as well. But yeah. It's always a good time to get out on the water and do some fishing, and we have Mark Cooper here with us from Top Knox Fishing. And I'm you gotta excited. Be careful when you say that. Okay? <laughs> I had to train my tongue this morning. I kept saying top knots. No, 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 no. Top knots. Top knots. And we'll get into how all that came about and what that uh, how the name came about and all this fun stuff. But Mark's a, a great fisherman. If you watch him on YouTube and his social media, he's yeah. He knows what he's doing. So it's gonna be a fun conversation. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, you bet, Mark. Yeah. So um, before we get started, Don, uh, radio station, you want to highlight today? Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll do one in the in the neighborhood of. Mark's uh, endeavors here. WOKI right there in Knoxville, the talk station and news talk. Um, they, we're on there mm -hmm. Saturdays, 1 30 to 2. So, uh, yeah. you know, if you're in that area, be sure and tune in. As we've mentioned uh, in multiple shows in the past, we appreciate our radio partners. We do. We appreciate the uh, the fact that they are running the show from east to west, from Memphis to Bristol. Exactly. You can pretty much catch this show. So, yep, yep, that's right. We uh, we're everywhere. Yeah. Radio and uh, and all the social stuff. So, so yeah. we appreciate them. Yeah. If you want to look at us, you can watch us on social media. And if you want to listen to us, we've got the podcast out there, and we also have the radio uh, station. So that's it's great. Uh, real quick, the e-store is hopping. Uh, we'll be getting some new stuff, new hats for sure coming in. Uh, not too uh, awful. Uh, or not. They'll too be in soon. In the future. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I got stumbled there. <laughs> They'll be in in the future. We got some neat designs coming in with a, a Tennessee outline and and a tri-star with some wildlife on it. Oh so yeah, yeah. Those are cool. And then uh, I think we're going to have some wildcast hats. So the folks who like to to watch us and follow us. Uh, I like the prototype you got on. Yeah. If you're if anybody's watching, it's it's a kind of a 3D thing with a, a lot of stitching. It's it's really nice looking. Yeah. So it, those are coming out pretty soon. So check out the e-store at shop.goutdoorstennessee. Shop com. And then if you want to pick up a license, goutdoorstennessee.com. That's right. Click the auto renew. Mm -hmm. And now we're 365, right? That's right. Yeah. So if you buy a license now, it's good for 365 days from the date of purchase. Right. And it'll expire 365 days out, which is great. A lot of a lot of fishermen and, and hunters will appreciate that. They've been asking for that for many years. Yeah. So, uh, we, uh, glad so, we can accommodate. No matter when you buy it, it's good for a whole year. So that's uh, that's great. Well, Mark, I appreciate you being with us uh, today. I appreciate you taking time to, to come visit us here in Nashville in our studio. Uh, I guess first off, introduce yourself. Tell folks who you are, and, and we'll jump into all this fun stuff. Okay, well, uh, my name is Mark Cooper. I'm your friendly uh, ginger fisherman here in Knoxville. <laughs> uh, my uh, YouTube page is called Top Knox Fishing. I have some social media pages that go along with it. I'm not as active on them as I am on YouTube, but basically I make cool fishing videos that are kind of informative and vlog style um, around the Knoxville area, and now I'm starting to branch out into other areas. Um, I guess... I can talk about myself first. Yeah, I kind of yeah. feel like Will Ferrell from Talladega Nights where he doesn't know what to do with his hands. So uh, I love it. You'll just have to give me a second to get used to this uh, you know, uh, narrative we're in here. But um, I am from Powell, Tennessee, which is north of Knoxville, Tennessee. I yeah. grew up there, went to elementary, middle school, and high school. And then I went to UT for my undergraduate degree and then graduated and went to the workforce. And um, when I started out fishing, I was probably – barely old enough to walk. There's mm -hmm. pictures of me and my dad on the Clinch River, uh, which is in um, Knoxville, Tennessee, or up above it in Clint, Tennessee, below Norris Dam, uh, trout fishing. And yeah. there's pictures of me in a bait shop holding like two 25-inch rainbow trout. Oh, um, nice. I don't know if I caught those, but I was in the picture <laughs> with them, and I had red hair, and I looked like a cute little kid, so I had to fish. There you go. Um, but that's where I really started was my dad started taking me. And then as uh, time progressed, um, you know, I got got into other 
sports, swimming, stuff like that. And then uh, I started fishing again a little bit more in high school. My mom started taking me, and basically awesome. she would – read her little newspaper or whatever <laughs> magazine and then i would just be on the riverbank for forever and it'd be about dark and i would not want to leave that was probably in middle school i guess and so it's just something that's been connected to me my whole life everybody in my family has always fished uh through generations my great grandfather uh, gene cooper took my dad and my uncles fishing on the clinch river uh and then his dad took them uh cat fishing and carp mm. fishing on the tennessee river in downtown knoxville so that's pretty cool i guess that's where uh, my love for catfish and stuff like that started. Um, but uh, I just love fishing everything, yeah. uh, uh, every part of it. Um, in college, I started a uh, club at the University of Tennessee, or a recreational sports team called the Collegiate Catfishing Association. Awesome. Because it was the, we, there wasn't anything like that for bass anywhere. And I was sitting on, uh, there's an old bridge in Knoxville off North Shore uh, that's next to, uh, it's a closed down one, but you can fish off the top of it. It was like okay. 3 a.m. one night, and I was like watching. Uh, I had followed some uh, college bass fishermen on Facebook or something. Uh -huh. I'm like, well, why isn't there a catfish one? <laughs> so I just went and f filled some applications out, got a teacher there, would sign off on it, and then we did that. And so uh, met a lot of cool friends from that, and uh, there we've all been – I don't know, best buddies ever since then. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't really take off. I probably jumped the gun a little bit early on it, I think, for the catfishing demographic because it's just now taken off. It's probably the fastest growing fishing segment in the country yeah. of anglers. But uh, that's where I really started with my passion for fishing and where it just really heated up. Um, before that, uh, I really... Going from high school to college, uh, I had applied to uh, West Point United States Military Academy. So oh, that yeah. was where... All my focus went to, mm -hmm. uh, well, when you're going through that whole process, you've got to get congressional nominations, all this crazy stuff, and you got to do a medical thing. And I had asthma on my record, oh, so I couldn't man. go. Uh. So after that, I was just kind of like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, my freshman and sophomore year of college, I was just kind of hanging out, and then I started fishing again. And that's kind of where I found my calling or yeah. you know, my purpose of what I wanted mm -hmm. to do. And I didn't know it was that at the time. But now, as I've gotten older, it's become that. Um, so I have my own full-time job outside of fishing, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I started the YouTube page, uh, yeah. after friends had told me for years to do it. Cause I've been catching really big catfish, stripers, uh -huh. muskies, everything with my buddies and sharing posting your on. pictures. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 And they were like, start a YouTube page. Cause I love talking about fishing. I'm pretty congenial and, uh, um, I'm creative. I just never did it. And then my friend, uh, uh, Justin Johnson with Kayak Catfishing was okay. like, you need to do this. And I was like, okay. So I started making videos, and they were awful at first, like so bad. I had the worst equipment. The yeah. audio was awful. I didn't have all these mics. It was a GoPro. It was just terrible. But I've gotten better over it over the last year, and here we are talking about fishing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, Perry Massengill, one of our fish, fisheries guys in Region 3, contacted me and said, you need to have Mark on, Top Knox Fishing, go yeah. look him up. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I started watching some of your stuff, and I was like, yeah, we need to get him in here and, and talk about – uh, what he does and, and his love for fishing and 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 Perry met you out on the water. You had caught a uh, a state record what skipjack herring. It's <laughs> right. the bait fish we use for uh, catfish and stripers here in East Tennessee. It's like the fillet mignon of the river for the big fish. Yeah. That's what they love. So we go catch those things. It's not a normal state record people are chasing, but hey, no. you got you. You're in the record book, right? Uh, yeah, we uh, so we got called out from UT. Um, back i guess five or six years ago and we had that giant ice storm for like three or four days there was like a ton of snow everything was iced over and so william and i my best friend were like uh let's go fishing and he had an <laughs> off-road toyota tacoma and we made it off campus and we went down to kingston steam plant and it was 16 degrees outside and oh, we were the man. only people there <laughs> and for whatever reason kingston was pumping hot water that day and we probably caught a hundred skipjack, a bunch of big stripers, and then two skips that were over the state record, and then one even bigger one he broke off at the bank because we weren't wow. using the right tackle. We we were still new to it, mm -hmm. but <laughs> that's how that happened. So what were you catching them on? Um, so you can catch skipjack on a myriad of different baits. Uh, 
The crappie flies, you can tie in a row like a sabiki j- rig, uh, like okay. you find in saltwater. Um, you can use foley spoons, um, rooster tail, stuff like that. I've got several videos on my YouTube page that shows you exactly what to buy, how to use them. I try to be thorough with those informational ones, mm-hmm. but basically just stuff like that, stuff like you catch panfish on. Um, but yeah. yeah, you don't you don't see many people chasing that that style of right. fishing. But you know, it's no. it's neat. It's fun. I'm sure it's a blast. And you know, it's a really good way if you've got kids or you know younger people or people who've never got into fishing, you can take uh-huh. them to go do that because when those fish spawn in the spring, they run up to the dams and uh, all the upper end of the reservoirs, and you can catch hundreds of them in a day, mm. um, including white bass. So they're a blast to catch. I mean, I've caught thousands of them, but I still love going to do it and taking my friends to do it. Uh huh. And then we get to use them as bait and catch giant fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, since we're on that, let's jump into it. Uh, so you use that for, for bait fish a lot of times. But yep. talk to us about some of the rigging and some of the things you do to, to catch fish. Because you're on the bank. You're not, on, you're not in a boat a lot of the times. Yeah. I mean, a lot of your videos, I saw you were bank fishing. So yeah. it's accessible for everybody. So mm-hmm. walk somebody through how to, say, catfish. Wanted to get out from there. From the and, bank? Yeah, from the bank. And you brought some rods with you. We can show those, too, if you want to. Yep. So I started, I've got a boat, and I fish a lot from the boat. But then I noticed a trade on YouTube and did some, my degrees in marketing, so I'm good at looking at numbers and okay, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So there's a lot of people who just don't have a boat to go fish, mm-hmm. but they want to catch big fish. So I was like, that's where I started in college. Like, the whole time there, I grew up pretty, you know, not well off, so I didn't have a boat. And we were all from the bank. Mm-hmm. And uh um, so I was like, okay, I'll make some bank fishing videos for people. Um, without getting into super great detail, I've got videos of it. Yeah, yeah. But basically, um, when you're looking for a bank fishing spot, you want something that's deep water accessible because deep water is the home of the fish, especially big fish. Yeah. And when they get active, they use specific topographical features to become active. So you got to learn how to read that. But mm-hmm. basically, you want to find a public location where you can cast a deep water. And deep water is, you know, relative wherever you're at. That could be 20 uh-huh. feet or 40 feet. Uh-huh. But there's an app called Navionics that you can go online it's free and it shows you all the depth contours of all the lakes and rivers most of the time yeah. across the whole United States. So from there, you can see where some deep water's at, and then you got to overlay it with Google, and then there you find you found a public bank fishing spot. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, so catfish wise, basically, they are primarily channel fish they'll be out in the channel most of the time you can catch them up shallow but you want to be able to get your baits out deep to them on mm-hmm. that main river ledge so uh the rods and stuff we have here i can go over in a little bit are designed i could cast it really far right so you could use surf gear um i brought some shorter ones today because we can't really fit it in the studio here <laughs> yeah. but you want to get those big cut baits out out deep to those fish so do you try to find uh so for those channels uh you know the right side of the the channel right side of the river you know make it easier if you're yeah so like an outside bend of the river Mm -hmm. is usually deeper so if you can find some public area that's on the outside of it that side's going to be deeper right there right you can cast straight out into the channel like you may get hung up reeling your stuff in because it comes straight up but like you've got your best opportunity to catch a big fish fishing in those areas most of the year for catfish cool yeah people uh, you know, always after the big fish, and it's neat that you can catch some big yeah. ones from the bank. You know, yeah. it's yeah. not. I caught my biggest bass from the bank. You know, and it's yep. it's fun. Even my biggest uh, catfish to this day is still from the bank. It mm. was like a ninety-something pound fish off the top of that bridge we <laughs> talked about earlier in college. It was just me and eight or nine of my friends all hanging out one night after classes. Had some rods out with cut bait, and uh, we hooked up on this fish. And I handed it over to this guy who'd never been fishing before in his life, and it was the biggest one I've ever seen. So oh, I was just man. like. That's just how it works out. I how guess. far were you off the surface of the water on this bridge? We Probably sixty out. feet. Wow! So we had to fight it around this bridge pile on oh, while it's man. rip and drag, and it tries to wrap around it a few times, and then we walk it over to the bank, and then one of us has got to run down the rip wrap <laughs> and try not to fall, and then net it. But yeah, it can be a challenge. Sounds like yeah, yeah. yeah that's the fun on, part I yeah. think is the challenge of it, especially bank fishing. Like it's I've caught a ton of big catfish and stripers and muskie from the boat, but doing it from the bank. There's some kind of intrinsic level of reward from it because it's so hard. Mm-hmm. But 
I don't know. And Neat. I see you're around a lot of, sometimes you're around dams and around steam plants and things like that. The warmer yeah. water, I, I'd say, is, is good. Yep. Those discharges and things. Yeah, especially this time of the year. If you can find a hot water discharge like the steam plant here in Nashville, I don't think there's a public access where you can yeah. walk down to it. But um, if you can find a hot water discharge this time of the year where there's catfish in the area, that'll be a good place to at least catch bait, your skipjack and stuff like that. And there'll probably be catfish in the area or a little bit of everything else. So, I, I, by watching your video, I think catfish is one of your favorites. So, Chase, yeah, catfish and sure. striper and things like that is probably your favorite fish. Yeah, I think catfish are probably overall my favorite because it really offers a type of fishing for everyone. So, uh, there are tons and tons of catfish of all different sizes yeah. from yeah. two to three pounders to fish over 100 pounds. And, like, if you're new to it and just want to catch fish or you've got kids or something like that, you can take – chicken breast and go throw it in the channel and catch a bunch of little fish which uh-huh. is a blast but yeah. if you're someone who like me who wants to target the big fish you can go do that so it's got a little bit of everything for people that's a lot of our fishing rodeos and and things that we do it's, it's the catfish that get stocked in those yeah. ponds and those yep. different yep. areas because they, they're fun to catch kids love it you know it's a great way to introduce yep young folks to to fishing absolutely and they can look and catch into a big one and then they're hooked for the rest of their lives. No pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> oh, well, um, striper fishing. Uh, some of the same techniques there. What do you? There's uh, well, there's a lot to catfishing. Mm-hmm. Like traditionally, people think you sit on the bottom and then you throw it out and you sit there. Which from the bank, that's what you have to do. You mm-hmm. can't really do anything else. But if you're from a boat. Uh, You can control drift over the main channel. You can pull planer boards. I don't know if you guys know what those are, but they basically spread your baits away from the boat. Right. I never fished them, but I've I've seen it done. Yep. And then we have dragging weights that you can throw out. So they're on the bottom, and then they pull out from the boat. So you can drag, like, the whole main channel for catfish. And they'll hit it going a mile an hour or sometimes more than that. Mm. Um, one of the most fun ways to catch catfish is bumping below a dam. And that's where you've got it in your hand, and you've got the – sometimes you've got to use your main motor in that heavy flow yeah, you to slow your boat down. Wear your life jacket. <laughs> yes, correct. Oh, yeah, PFDs, definitely. be safe. If you don't have big enough of a boat, don't go up to the boils. Right. You can do it downstream. Uh, but – you just bump in your hand, and they will hit it so hard that it'll almost rip it out of your hand. Wow. I've almost gotten pulled off the side of the boat because it was just ripping <laughs> so much line. I didn't have my drag adjusted. So that's that's my favorite way to catch a catfish, okay. for sure. Yeah. Wow. And I've, I've seen people pull big ones out of there, you know, in those boils and yep. getting closer to the dams. But, yeah, be careful. Uh, but it yep. is fun. It is a good good yeah. spot Make to catch sure some big ones. Make sure you're safe and you got somebody with you that knows what they're doing and the boat's big enough. Don't go when they're spilling. I don't care. It's not worth it. Don't yeah. get close to it. Yeah. So... Well, show us some of the some of the rods you brought and some of the, the you got a huge bait there. <laughs> yeah, that's a musky rig or a striper one. I guess we can start out with the catfish stuff. Yeah, pull it up here and we'll show it to everybody. There's a lot of watch your head there, Don. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> not to knock your stuff out. Uh, there's a lot of different catfish brands. There's a lot of different catfish brands on the market. Uh, Big Cat Fever is a company that sponsors me. Uh, okay. They're probably the largest catfishing brand in the nation, and I've known the owners since they first started the page, Caleb and uh, Mr. Clay. And, and great guys, great company. They support catfishing. They're trying to get it to grow and introduce it to more people. So they just do a great service to the community, catfish community, and that's a company I'd like to support. But And it's an orange rod. You can't yeah, beat that. They make green <laughs> rods, black rods. I mean, it, it sticks out because sometimes at catfishing, you're at night, and these glow in the dark. Uh-huh, so this yeah. is a heavy-duty rod. I'm actually going down to Florida in two weeks to go Goliath grouper fishing. So this is the extra heavy one. We're going to try to catch a 300-pound grouper on it. Awesome. But basically... These rods uh, are built uh, super heavy duty for catfishing, aluminum guides, um, stainless steel, real seats. They're made out of e-glass, so they're super tough because you'll beat your gear to death yeah, on these big catfish. For sure. Um, but I've just got a, uh, it's called an Okuma Komodo. It's a low profile reel. It kind of looks like a bass reel, mm-hmm. but it's got 25 pounds of drag. So okay. it's super heavy duty. You can put lots of line on it. I use braid, uh, but that's the basic setup for it. There's lots of different types of rods for different types of catfishing just mm-hmm. like bass fishing you got crankbait rods topwater rods spinnerbait rods spin, like tons of different things exactly 
point is just get out there and start fishing is the thing. You don't have to have the nicest stuff. My biggest fish was on hand-me-down stuff. Yeah. But it's good to have nice gear. Um, that's what that is. That's a catfish rod. And we'll run anywhere from six to eight at one time, just so you, depending on what we're doing. Looks like you run a couple of couple of baits there. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a double hook rig for one bait. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we would run, run one big giant piece of skipjack on this. Um, we caught an 83-pound uh, blue this fall on a whole two and a half pound skipjack just with the wow. yeah so it's just crazy the type of baits they'll eat um we've used like five pound carp before as bait it's just the craziest <laughs> thing you can think to throw or lower it down to them they'll eat especially the big flatheads they yeah. like the live baits. you so. got to give them a big bait to catch a big fish right Correct. most of the time most of the time sometimes they want a little piece of bait yeah um Musky and striper fishing is a little different for live baiting for stripers and stuff. You can use the same stuff. You just got to rig it differently. Okay. Again, I go over all that on my page. It'd be hard to go over that now. But yeah, plus. Top Knox Fishing. Go check it out at Top Knox Fishing. Musky fishing, you're using this as a St. Croix musky rod, but you've got to use steel leaders because they'll bite right through yeah. your leader line. Yeah, you remind can, them. They have teeth. Correct. <laughs> yes, yeah. don't, have teeth. Do not put your hand in their mouth. Your hand will get cut. Yeah. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, but this is just a big, giant glide bait for musky. Um, it's probably a 10-inch bait. It's called a Manta Hang 10. But basically, you work it like a topwater plug, except it's subsurface, and it'll glide way out to the side. And those muskies will just come up and T-bone it. Mm. Now, when you go musky fish, you're going to be putting in some work. Like, you could go fish 12 hours in a day and not see one of them. Mm. Or you could catch three or four. It's just depending on, you know, how lucky you get and if they're active or not. There's certain bodies of water that they're more productive on here in Tennessee, too. Where do you Correct. normally like to go after them? Uh, well, so... Uh, um, TWRA stocks them on Melton Hill Lake, yeah. and Mel Melton Hill is going to have the bigger fish. Um, it has a cool trout water uh, that runs into it, so it, I think it has what's called a benthic layer of current, which is cool water, so in the summer they can move down to it and they don't die. Mm -hmm. But they're, to my knowledge, natural reproduction fish on Watts Bar. So you can catch them on the Clinch River side, the Emory River side, the Obed, up in the mountain, which is where they, the natural strain comes from. Okay. And that's a real adventure to go do that. We're mm -hmm. going to be doing that here soon. Uh, but getting up there is the hard part with the boat. <clears throat> yeah. We'll talk about... Um you keep referencing your channel, and I want people to go check that out, Top Knox Fishing. But what's some of your favorite videos that you've shot so far? And I know you've – I watched one the other day. You were taking – was it a nephew or a friend or something? I mean, a young child having a blast. I mean, he was yeah. pulling them in from the bank. Yep. Uh, we uh, – that was actually at my family's place on Watts Bar, um, my uncle's. But we caught, I think, about 400 pounds of catfish in eight hours. <laughs> wow. It was 38 fish by the time we were done. So that was just – and then – an insane day like yeah. the video i put online was like an hour and a half long and i edited out half of it <laughs> yeah but it's, it's hard not to leave it all in and... yeah so stuff like that now he is the luckiest little kid i've ever met in my whole life first time i ever took him striper fishing he caught a 50 p three pound striper <laughs> from the bank wow yeah we were just chilling uh on melton hill lake and threw out some cut baits and our rod just goes <laughs> 53 pound fish that's also on my page which is bigger than Bigger than anything I've ever caught. My biggest is like f right at 50. Wow. So that was his first striper ever, and he spoiled, but he <laughs> oh, loves man. it. Yeah. Um, really. And, you know, I was happy I got to be there with him and experience that. And I think that's really the direction of the channel I want to I want to go with is being able to share that experience that I have with my family and friends and people yeah. I meet with other people and then maybe show them how to do it too. Yeah. Because I can't take everybody to go fish, but I can maybe show people how to do it mm -hmm. or something like that and then they can go and do it on their own. I think it's cool that the, is the, it's a channel that comes out of Tennessee. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do too. That's what we're all about, sharing the love of the, of the sport and getting people out there and showing yeah. them how to do it. And I think you're doing a good job with that. Well, I love doing it. I wouldn't rather be doing anything else. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. That's awesome. Well, I, I want to learn more about the uh, the uh, catfishing thing you mentioned at the beginning, the collegiate catfishing. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Are there most, more teams that no, do that? No, okay. not yet. It kind of fizzled off. I just didn't have time to deal with it after college. But if you've got some kids watching this who want to do it, you can go and set it up at your university. There's sports recreational programs. It's really easy to go through. Um, just same kind of scenario as bass fishing. You just compete against each other. There's a lot of growing bigger catfishing tournaments across the country. There's okay. hundreds of them. Yeah. Um, there's one down in Alabama that had almost 200 boats. Um, there's It's huge. The market for catfishing is growing faster than any other fishing demographic in the U.S. 
um, if you go and look at the numbers of how many anglers do it and how fast it's growing. Mm. Because people realize that they're all across the U.S. There's channel catfish, flathead catfish, blue catfish, yeah. and there's tons of different fishing methods for them, and people are really getting into it. I think the show... As corny as it is, River Monsters uh, really got pe- – I mean, that's what I was watching. I'm yeah. like, this is freaking cool. I want to go do yeah. this. And uh, I was like, I guess I'll go catfishing. And then, <laughs> and then that's you can where catch it started. Them, catch them with your hand, too. You can yeah. dive down in there and grab them. I don't think I want to do that. I've, I had my finger broken one time by one releasing it. <laughs> oh, so, gosh. Yeah. I don't know if I could do that. But, you know, people are like adrenaline stuff. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I want to mention that you know MTSU has the Middle Tennessee Outdoor Pursuits program. We right. had them on the show recently, but they're adding fishing to their recreation recreational clubs there at MTSU. So yeah. I think a lot of other schools are on, on board for this, and, yeah. and maybe some you know. I think we need to send Mark's link to them. Yeah, get them fired up. Get them fired up. Fishing. You know, and not just fishing, but catfishing or yeah. whatever. You know. Yeah, just any type of fishing is awesome. Yeah. So we're going to run out of time uh, here in a few few minutes, but. Do you eat them? Do you like to take some home, or is uh, the it smaller mostly catfish? Catch yeah. and release. Yeah. I like to promote catch and release on the bigger fish because you want them in the environment to make more yeah. bigger fish. But there's tons and tons and tons and tons and little two to three pound catfish to ten. They taste better. Uh, catfish are uh, slow growth fish. I mean, they're really old. Like an eighty pound fish is twenty something years old. So it just doesn't taste good when it gets that big. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can catch the smaller ones, and they taste way better, and it's better for the whole ecosystem. So I'll eat the smaller ones. What I really like eating is walleye and sauger. Uh-huh. That's my favorite. Yeah, thing. We didn't get to that. So for sure. So you you. I mean, on your channel, you also have trout, panfish, walleye, well, I mean, everything. Do I don't care what it is. I like to catch it, yeah. period. <laughs> I mean, I may not be the best at those, and those videos may be funny because I look like a rookie at it, but, you know, whatever. We have fun out there doing it. Last one we went with, my friend Chad got a hook stuck in his hand because a 20-pound drum went crazy, and we oh. only caught one walleye. So, you know, it just happens. Yeah. Uh, that's the fun of it. But uh, those are the best-tasting fish, I think, and they look super cool. So we do a little bit of that, too, just – uh, you know, really anything fishing related on the channel, I like going after the bigger stuff. That's mm-hmm. where my passion's really at, uh, no matter what that is, saltwater, freshwater. But I just like catching every fish and just meeting people along the way while I do it and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I didn't see much bass fishing or, you know, on your channel, but I mean... Not yet. Yeah. Uh, I think I may do some spring bass fishing here. I catch cool. them on accident, uh, uh, musky and striper fishing a lot. Um, I just haven't bass fished a ton in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think I'm going to do a couple smallmouth ones up on the uh, Little Pigeon River this spring waiting. That'd be fun, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Waiting is my favorite. I love to wait. It's pretty fish. cool. Mm-hmm. Catch a big fish from like, like you're wading in the water. It's pretty nifty. Yeah. Still one of our most popular videos of all times on our channel. Our YouTube channel, yeah. Has been the creek fishing yeah. video that Because people you have Doug access yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, like... Sometimes bass fishing, it's hard to get into because you got to buy all this crazy, like a lot of rods and reels yeah. on super expensive boats, all the other stuff. Catfish didn't really like that. You can go throw some chicken livers out there and catch some catfish and have a good time. <laughs> or you can go spend $80,000 on a Sea Ark with a 12-inch depth finder and have a $60,000 truck pulling it. Yeah, like, it's right. just whatever you want to do. All um, different levels. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Mark, I appreciate it. It's been a fun conversation. I'd like yeah. to have you back That sometime. went by really quickly. It, it does. <laughs> time flies when we're having fun here yeah. on Wildcast. But uh, go check him out. Top Knox Fishing on, on YouTube. Uh, you've got a Facebook uh, account there. Same same handle, Top yeah. Knox Fishing. And, uh, Most of the stuff's going to be on YouTube, though. I don't post yeah. a lot on social media. It's just I make YouTube videos yeah, for right now. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Well, I appreciate you being here. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, we'll try to have you back sometime soon. Yeah. yeah. Sounds maybe we good. Get on the water with Yeah, you, for sure. We'll yeah. go fishing. <laughs> that sounds even better. All right. Well, this is Tennessee Wildcast. Todd, thank you for running the board, making it sound good. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.